All right, so here's my next project, this little sunshade on the driver's side rear door. It was a little loose, and then, silly me, I pulled it out. I don't know, for some reason I expected it to maybe roll, retract back in, like one of those roller blinds on a window. But as you can see, it just pulled out. So at first it wasn't too big an issue. It was cold out, windows were closed. Now that it's going into spring and summer, I've been opening the windows at least just to vent the inside and it's been flapping around, it's getting a little mangled. Even the little metal's kinda popping up. Let me shove that back in there. Main screen still works really, still works fine, not an issue. I think I showed you the one on the other side when I, since I took my door panel off, I cracked that. So I'll see if I can just fix it or if I need to replace that. Same thing with this. Let me just see how much parts are and hopefully they're not too expensive. All right, let's check that next to see how much replacement costs are. So what I like to do when I'm not sure of what and to their BMW parts catalog and we'll go on there, close all those ads. All right, so let's go down to classic E39. I have a sedan, 540 USA and my build date is May 2003. And I have a manual transmission and let's browse some parts. All righty. So I think it's going to be under vehicle trim. Here we go. Let's scroll down. I see some doors, bumpers, not bumpers. I think it's inside door type of stuff. Where is that? Let's slide down some more. There we go. Roller sun visor, rear door. All right. We're looking for this part, part number four, which is left rear door sun blind. That's $190.95. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just highlight that part number, or we can actually just click on the part number and it'll pull it up in the diagram. Let's highlight that, copy it, and then let's go to FCP Euro. Uh, we'll go down to their BMW parts, paste, the part number and look it up that way and here it is all right holy bocce ball six hundred ninety three dollars and ninety nine cents for that part oh no that's crazy yeah uh, i'm gonna have to try to figure out how to fix that there's no way i'm paying 700 bucks for a part that i've used maybe eight times since 2006 when i bought the car but while i'm still here let's go back to the real oem Let's page back and let's just see how much the main part is because again, I broke the little plastic corner right here of the main one. So that's gonna be part number one. And so that's this part number. Real o OEM has it down as $190.95, but let's copy that part number, go back to FCP Euro's website, let's delete that one and paste that part number and oh wow that one's a lot less expensive it's half the price it's uh the the whole one is 329 dollars and 99 cents that's still more than i want to spend so between the two parts 330 and 700 dollars so over a thousand bucks to replace those two parts no not for me thank you i'm going to try to do some plastic welding on the part that cracked and the other one we're just going to try to clue something together all right so what that means is next step is we need to go to the shop manual so i can figure out how to remove that and maybe try to fix it i don't know we'll see all right so i got the service manual out let's find body doors 411 Trim panels 411-7. It's removing the trim panels. Let's go and look in the index window shades. Nope. Door window switches, convenience opening, closing, anti trap. Trim panels 411-7. It's removing the trim panels. Let's go and look in the index window of shades. Door window. Door window switches, convenience opening, closing, anti trap.
right, well that was a bust. Couldn't find it. All right, we're gonna have to wing this. I did find one website that uh, called e39source.com that had a blog post describing how to remove the sh sunshade. So we're gonna, let's go give that a try next. They said just take a little thin bladed screwdriver, squeeze, get it in there and then you can feel where the clip is and it should just pop out. Can we see anything? No. Let me set you guys up on a tripod so you can, I can see better what I'm doing. Let me get a screw, uh, let me get a flashlight. All right, got my flashlight. Let me see if I can see where that clip is. I see something shiny in there. There we go. Oh my goodness, that was a pain in the butt. There's that clip. I had to come in. I had to come in from the side and bend that, get the screwdriver underneath to push it up and out of the, the way. And here's a little busted piece. I wonder if that's what caused this to not retract anymore. Let's take this to the workbench. So I got the shade out little piece broke off when I was removing it and I don't know if that broke off while I was removing it or it just happened to broken off and that's why this stopped working but it's just like a just a roller fits down here on the one end just like a roller blind basically let me get a let me get a hand Put this in here lightly and give you guys a better view so it's not rolling not returning but I can roll it up so Okay, managed to get it rolled up, but it's going to still kind of want to unroll itself. I got to figure out a way to kind of cinch that into place. So the problem though is this is all like a one piece plastic. You know, maybe it's not a problem. Let's see if I can pop that out of position. Pop that out. Actually, I just cracked it on top, but that had been broken. Now we should be able to slide this whole thing off. And this part cracked, but hopefully we can just pop that back together. A little plastic welding. Fix that up. Put the clip back in too to help hold it in. Okay, now I'll be able to work on this. So remember, the square peg, square part was on the bottom, round was on top, so that we can try to figure this out.
See, I can get it to roll up, but, and I can feel some tension in my right hand as I'm holding this. But it seems like it wants to unroll afterwards. I wonder why is that? Let's try to figure that out. Because I don't want to spend $600 to... So it definitely has some tension on it when I roll it up. I can feel it. And, but I let it go, and it just wants to unroll. So spring's not that, hopefully does that mean the spring is not broken and it's just something slipped? Let's see, how does this come off? There we go, got it off. Okay, so this is the part that spins, keeps the pressure on it. This side just freely turns. Anything else we can disassemble up here? Pushing. Now right, we get this side out. Oh, there we go. That's doing something for me. There's the spring on the inside. It's, that part's still stuck in there. You guys see down in there? Tell me what's going on. For some reason, the spring wants to unroll it rather than roll it back up. Something, I have to preload this? Oh, well that's new. It's got some little plastic. This end's got some plastic that I think catches on this. So, maybe let's try we put the pliers down. Let's try twisting this up and just getting a nice good amount of preload on it. Let's spin that a little bit more. I can really feel the tension on the spring. And now let's cinch that into place. Oh my God, did we get it? Ah, uh, it's, we got it. I think, I think we just need to, it's working like it should, or it was working like it should. You know, let's, let's pop that out again. Well, let's try. Let's try tightening that up again. Freeloading it. Okay, I think we're on the track. We just gotta figure out how to do it the right way. And is it righty tightsy, lefty loosey? Let's try that. Right. A lot of spring. Got it working a little bit, but I still can't get it working all the way. I'm not sure why. Actually, let me let me use my friend the vise. Okay. 
So let's try. Just preloading it with a lot more tension. Did that work? Nope. Time for some more research. All right, so I ended up doing some more research to figure this out. And what I really didn't know was how a roller blind works. And I believe this works just like a roller blind. And so a little bit of research I did, basically roller blind, I was trying to put the tension into it by turning the spring, but from what I've read, you're not supposed to do that. You're just supposed to roll it up yourself. Roll the blind up on the thing. So let's do that. And I believe this is how it goes. I gotta double check that on the other side of my car where this is still working. But basically, so just like on a roller blind you have one side that's just a round end that just kind of will spin freely. And then this end is flattened. Let me give you a shot there. Hopefully you can focus on that. And that goes into this little, you know, it's supposed to go to the bottom part where, and I think when, remember when I took this off, they said a little piece was loose. I think that broke and that's why I had issues with that. So hopefully I can just fix that with a little bit of plastic welding, but that locks it in place. And so I'm going to hold that with my fingers. I'm going to let that bottom round part just go straight, uh, just freestyle. So let's pull it out. And then look, it's rolling back. My spring might be weak because it doesn't roll back all the way. Let me just try it again. Roll all the way out. Yeah, I think the spring, not broken completely, but I think it's weak. So that's why it's not rolling it back all the way. Either that or I'm not, I didn't roll it tight enough because this is a little bent here. All right, let's try to fix this up, get this back to the state it was in. So if you remember, I had this little, this little soft, squishy part. Let me pop that back on there. And let me put the little retaining clip back on there as well. Okay, this side I didn't, I didn't ever bother removing that, just on this side. And that's in there pretty securely. All right, let's f flatten, try to flatten out these metal things. I'm just gonna take a screwdriver. Hopefully I can just kind of flatten it this way. Well, let's use my fingers a little bit. Sometimes just using your fingers rather than a tool is the easiest. You know, your tools are the best fingers at times. I was watching a channel called Rosa Stringworks. Uh, older gentleman named Jerry Rosa, who his channel was mostly guitar repairs. Guitar, mandolins, banjos, uh, interest, you know, all acoustic stuff, bluegrass. He's a group bluegrass musician. Pretty cool stuff. But I just remember watching him. He, anytime he got an old guitar with the tuning pegs are all bent out of shape. First thing he tried to do to bend them back, just use his, use his fingers. That didn't work. Pair of pliers to help him out. I think he's, unfortunately, he's since retired from uh, repair, repairing instruments. Uh, he's, he's, I believe he mentioned his arthritis was getting to him, but his channel is still up, so you can watch all his old videos. And the name of that channel is Rosa Stringworks. Always, uh, I always enjoy watching it because it's almost like sitting around watching, you know, watching your, your grandfather do, you know, work around the house, do some repairs and you can watch what he's doing, gain all his knowledge, pretty cool stuff. 
All right, I think I straightened that out. Let me just clean off my workstation a little bit without losing. Okay, so let's try rolling. Maybe I'm not rolling it the right direction, although I think I am. But just for shits and giggles, let's try it the other direction, see if that makes any difference. I'm gonna try to roll it as tight as I can. Just have it flat on here. Maybe that's the proper way. Uh, I have a feeling it's the other way because I would, but let's test it out. So I'm going to put this, so in the car normally it'd be positioned like this with the square towards the bottom round at the top. Since I'm not in the car, I'm going to hold it with my fingers up here and let's just give it a shot. Yeah, I think the spring's just worn out. It's not, not as stiff as, it's not as springy as it used to be, and I think that's what's caught, what caused the issue. Let's give it one more attempt. I'm gonna roll it with what I believe is the proper way. Again, I'm holding it upside down. Yeah, it goes to about here and then the spring doesn't want to retract it any further. And so I think it's just lost its oomph. Hmm. Let me probably, let me take this off again and let me see if we can in addition to rolling it up, maybe I can preload it like I was doing before. See how that goes. Okay, got that off. So let's re-roll this. This is going to be tricky. Hmm. Let me get a zip tie. Got a couple zip ties to lend me a hand. So let's roll that beautiful bean footage. Or at least roll the blind up. I'm going to try to roll it as tight as I can. And we'll see if we can get this to work. I mean, worst case, if I can't get it to work, I could just, uh, I have some smaller zip ties somewhere. I could just put a zip tie around this or maybe even uh, a piece of string, piece of wire, something to hold it, uh, keep this from unraveling. And then that way, uh, discourage people sitting in the back seat from trying to engage it too. But all right, so we got that. Let's zip tie this. This is just a temporary measure, just to hold hold the roll, as they say. Different from the fold roll. I'm not sure what the fold roll is. There's a town nearby though that uh, every Late spring, early summer, they do a, what's called a fold roll. It's like a little town fair. Okay. Got that loose. So if I remember, there we go. That worked. So the green part still has these little tangs on it. And I think those tangs fit into that little gap in the metal. So it's got one tang there, one tang here, 100, 180 degrees apart. And I think that keeps it from rolling. So that didn't break because I I thought I read sometimes that those can break and then it doesn't, the spring doesn't spring anymore. So let's put some more tension into the spring if we can. Is, would that work? Do I have to hold the other side? Just twist this a whole bunch. And I'm assuming rightsy tightsy, leftsy loosey, that's what it was working for me before. And actually, let me make sure I'm spooning the spring. No, the plastic's not moving in the spring, but just to be on the safe side. All right, so that's in. It engaged those little tabs. 
I'm not going to put these other two pieces back yet until I uh, test this proof of concept type of thing. I'm going to get my pair of diagonals, cutting pliers. When I was a kid, my dad always called these a pair of dykes, but I don't think that's uh, PC anymore nowadays. So now the tricky part is cutting a zip tie with, without cutting the fabric, and then also, there we go, not letting it unwind. I think one more snip will do it. There we go. No damage to the fabric. All right, so let's give this a try. So again, holding it from the top as if it would be back in, back in position with this fixed. So I'm holding it, unroll, and then you would clip this on the door frame and roll it back up. Uh, better, but got a little bit farther, a little bit further, but not all the way. Last time we were getting just to that, fir that second uh, batten, the wire, little wire thing calling it a batten since that's what they call them on sales on sailboats I don't know what what else to call it so let's try again and I'm not letting the top square part turn and yeah see it's losing it's it's not rolling up as far do I try to preload it a bit more or do I just say what the hey let's uh, let's just go with it let's just zip tie it we try preloading it a little bit more Got another zip tie. No, that's the old zip tie. Toss that one. New zip tie going in. That'll work temporarily. Pop the end. And again, let's. Let's just get a really good wind going. Let me just let me set my watch up so we can watch the second hand. Fancy Timex takes a lick and keeps on ticking. Been happy with this watch except the Indiglo stopped working. But it's like a thirty buck, thirty dollar watch, I think. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. Got it off of Amazon. Let's time it. Uh, so it was. Let's say we started around the two. So let's keep twisting. Twist in the afternoon away. Twist and shout. Don't want to sing too much of it. I don't want to get copyright claimed. Not that I'm making any money on this channel. Spin, spin, spin. Okay, fingers are getting tired. Should probably, I could probably set this up to a drill, but I'm, let's not go overboard. Let's not go crazy. I'd have to dig my drill out. Actually, I don't think I even have the drill at home. I think I left it at work. That's not going to help. All right, so we'll twist one minute or two minutes. Is that back end twisting? Can anyone tell me? Ah, uh, yeah, see the back end is twisting. All right. Maybe that's my issue. Oh. Okay, let me get my helping hand here. Handy dandy vice. Just have it grab that. Thank you, Mr. Vice. Pull this out. Alright, let's start over now. So now we're at the seven. Alright, let's twist on number seven. Oh yeah, I can feel that now. Although all this pre-load, load, I think as soon as I take it out of the vise, it's going to pop. Uh, let's lock that in place. Lock that in position. There we go. Uh, yeah, I, it wants to. It wants to spin, so I don't think this is going to work. Yeah, see, as soon as I let it go, there goes all my preload. So now all we're left with is the load from me rolling it up. Let's try that again. Let's cut. Clip, 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 snip, snip, snip. With the cutting pliers, toss that guy. And again, hold from the top. Don't let that turn. Oh, 
almost we got yeah brought about the same as last time you know what i think i think that spring is just weakened it's not didn't break i think it's just weak and it it doesn't yeah there's not enough force because let's do it a couple more times and i think it's going to get worse and worse each time we do it maybe not it's a little bit better, but I don't want this dangly thing sticking out. Alrighty, I think we're gonna have to just roll her up and cinch it down and then put it back into this and reinstall it and live, live without this. I'm okay with that. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I think I've only used this handful of times since 26, since 2006 when I bought the car. Mostly I think I used it in the beginning just to just to kind of show off. But if I'm going to use the uh, the blinds, I usually just use the big one. And then the back, the one on the back window, which eh, needs some work too. It pops out of its tracks. So I got to see what's what's going on there. Another Another fun little project. See all these projects too, like this. This is not what I call a serious uh, <clears throat> project that, that affects how the car drives, how it runs. This is just one of those quality of life issues that pop up as your car gets older. You know, when the car is brand new, everything works. You know, you, you touch stuff, nothing breaks. But then as the car gets older, uh, plastic gets dried out, gets brittle. You go and touch it. it and it'll snap. I think the worst thing ever that I had like that was I used to have an 85 Corvette uh, and I didn't get it when it was new. It, this happened to me probably, I think I sold that in 2006, right before I got the BMW. But uh, so about in 2005, I went to open the passenger side door. I heard a little pop and I couldn't open the door f from the outside. I could open it from the inside, but not from the outside. Turns out, uh, on the inside where the door handle there's there's a little rod that goes into the door handle so as you open the handle it pulls on the rod to release the mechanism handle was fine the rod was fine but there was like a little plastic clip at the end of that rod once you inserted it through the door handle a little plastic clip and that cracked that's what cracked and then the rod popped out and it wasn't connected anymore Clip was 50 cents from, uh, I think I ended up getting it from Eckler's, uh, but it was 50 cent part, but it took me, took me a good couple hours to take the door apart, fix it, and then reinstall the door panel on the inside. Fun. All right, so let's roll this up as tight as I can. And I'm just gonna, rather than use a zip tie, let me just put it in the vise for safekeeping. And just gently, just to hold it, hold it rolled up. I'm not gonna crank down on it because I don't wanna bend the metal cylinder there. There we go. Let me see if I can find a smaller, oh, uh, smaller zip tie. Okay, no zip ties, but I did find some stainless steel wire. I think that might work better because I'm going to, I don't think there's a whole ton of room in here with that. It's not, I'm worried the end of the zip tie might, might uh, get in the way. So let me just cut off a piece of my cutting pliers. Put that to the side. Let me get this again. So I might need two. I might, I'm going to, Put one, I think, on this end. Snip, snip. Cut the end off. Oop, wonder where that went. And let me see if I can bend this down. No. Let me just twist this a little bit more. Wish I had a pair of Lyman pliers. Actually, let me see if I have a, something better. 
more suited. No lineman pliers, linesman pliers, but you get a pair of channel locks. Maybe I can grab these. There we go. Perfect. Everything's a hammer when you need it to be. Uh, let me get another piece of wire. We're going to do the same thing on this side just to keep it neater. You know, I'm using a big thing. I, You know how long I've had this roll of stainless steel wire? I think my dad picked up a whole bunch of these at a flea market back in the late 80s. Gave me one to me and said, hey, keep this in your car in case, in case your muffler ever falls off. You can just wire it back up. And again, you got to remember back in the 80s, it seems like mufflers were falling off your car, rusting out every couple years. I haven't had to replace a muffler in... Last time I replaced a muffler was actually on that 85 Corvette I was telling you guys about. It was in... I had, and it wasn't because it rusted out. I had backed into a curb with it. Uh, it was, it was, the curb was one of those annoying curbs. It was high enough to, to catch the muffler. The rest of the body was fine, uh, but it bent, bent it in. So, and I think this happened probably, wow, 90, 98 or so, 98, 99. It was nice. I ended up ordering a Borla stainless steel cat back system for the uh, for the Corvette wasn't that bad to install sounded great too it was fun part was like driving through the city uh, you know have hearing it echo off the buildings we're going through a parking garage too and it was so loud the rumble sometimes it would set the cars car alarms off all right clean that off where's my where's my hammer Tap that into place. Okay. Now, hopefully, I don't have to undo that all, all that work. So, so here's the top with the round hole, and I think I cracked this when I was uh, removing this part. And here's the bottom where the whole piece was missing. But as I mentioned, I think that broke. Uh, in an earlier video, there was a p I could see the crack here, so I think that broke it. I don't know if somebody, if I hit it, somebody hit it, but I think that's when that happened. So, let me try to get this open again without breaking anything more broker. Yeah, at first I thought this was all plastic, but this is actually a little metal metal piece that just tucks in here and I wouldn't be surprised if it was glued in or there we go it still holds pretty well even though it's broken so this is the bottom so that's where you want this side and fit that in here It's in there. And now we just pop this back in. Pop those pieces. Hey, and it looks it looks halfway decent, non-functional. But I also didn't spend. Uh, I also didn't spend six hundred. What was the price again? Like almost seven hundred dollars. That's nuts for this thing. I mean, I guess like I understand it was a, It's probably only used in the E thirty nine. Well, I gotta check the part. Maybe it was used on the E thirty eight too, but probably not. I guess. Okay, so now I just gotta. 
these the little pieces? Do I have all the pieces? I wonder what that little screw is for. Hmm. Adjusting maybe? Okay, this is shinier, this is matte. So that looks shiny, that looks matte. So I'm gonna assume it goes this way. So, so right there, ah, there's the piece. So there's like a couple other pieces missing it. And then there was only this one piece that fell out. So I think this got hit and it broke probably, yeah, 21 year old plastic. It probably just got brittle something cracked something broke and it came loose Is that the type of plastic abs 15 at the build date 1102 839 all right so i don't have all the parts to fix this i'm not gonna i think i'm just gonna let it go as is and not bother with going crazy with this i sh should have moved the wire a little bit Anybody gonna notice that little crimp there? It's gonna drive me nuts every time I think about it. But I don't think anyone else is gonna notice that. Same thing, broken up here. You know what, I'm just gonna leave those cracks because it feels fairly sturdy. I don't think it's gonna come loose. And then if, in, if it does, those extra cracks are gonna be easy enough for me to remove this again. So I'm just gonna do that. I mean, worst case, if it doesn't work, I think basically what I'm trying to say, I think this is good enough for right now. If this doesn't work, uh, next time we'll do the plastic welding. Why go crazy? I still have to learn how to plastic weld. All right, let's go back to the car and reinstall this. All right. So popping it in, once I undid this clip, it should pop right back in. So again, square peg part goes towards the bottom a little clip here that I'm guessing engages the bottom edge here. And there it is, and you can see where it goes over top. So it should just be able to push it in place. There. Reasonably secured. Doesn't look that bad. Now no, now I don't have to worry about anybody pulling it out and having it flap in the breeze anymore. So we got it. Is it perfect? Heck no. Is it good enough? Yes. We kludged it together and it works for now. Good. The other side still works. Hopefully that'll keep working. I'm going to try not to use it, but if when push comes to shove and it breaks, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And hopefully this doesn't break. All right, thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.